This is Tom and Aggie. Today, we're gonna to talk about ball of the foot pain, metatarsalgia, look at all the nerves and pain. And you've been here before. You've been told to stretch, to exercise, to lose weight. This is different. I'm gonna tell you why this is not working and why it doesn't work for most people and why you're spinning your wheels and how we're gonna fix it starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We love our subscribers, we love the comments. Tell us what helped and tell us how you got your ball of the foot pain. We need it to keep growing. So if you can see right here, this is the ball of my foot. Metatarsalgia, you have your tendons, your ligaments, a lot of stuff going on right here. I'm gonna grab my foot model that fell apart. You got nerves, tendons, ligaments, a lot of muscles in between, a lot of stuff. So in metatarsalgia, you have Medi uh, stress fractures to your metatarsals, capsulitis, tendinitis, uh, you can get Morton's neuroma, all that kind of stuff. And it's just because you get too much pressure in the front of your foot. So you can see right here, as I walk, I'm putting extra pressure right there. That's metatarsalgia. When I put more pressure into the ball of my foot, the front's gonna hurt more. It's like somebody's punching you 10,000 times a day. Take a look at the side view of my foot. The left foot can bend up, but the right foot's just a little bit tighter right here by about 10 degrees. That's gonna put more pressure on the front or the ball of the foot. So take a look, it can't bend up as much as the left foot. So look at it again, the left foot bends up, but the right foot is like 10 degrees less. That's gonna make me lean more pressure into the ball of the foot, the bones, the nerves, the muscles, the capsules, that's the problem. The first thing you wanna think about for your ball of the foot pain is medications. This is pain control, but it does not get to the root of the problem. Things like Aleve, Ibuprofen, Tylenol, they do help the pain. And in fact, the anti-inflammatories actually decrease the swelling in the site. But I can't recommend that you continue using them because I have seen people injure their kidneys and not really get to the root of the problem. If you're going to ice, get yourself an ice bottle and freeze it. It takes about an hour to freeze that and this one won't break the bottle. And you just rotate back and forth. Your plantar fascia will get iced up. The two main nerves in the bottom of your foot, your lateral and medial plantar nerves, they will start to have less pain, they'll be less sensitive, and the swelling will go down. This will give you a semi-long term, and I'm talking about a day or two of relief, but it's still not a solution. It's still not going to prevent new damage from occurring every day as you walk. But icing can work really well. It only works to relieve the pain long term. It does not cure the problem long term. It's better than heat. So this is a heating pad right here. I would say if you're going to do anything, get yourself icing and massage, not the heat. So this is a cryosphere. This is used by professional athletes. Uh, this is kind of all the rage right now. It's pretty good for the upper body while you hold it. So it's a frozen ball of ice with metal around it. It's basically aluminum and it rotates in the holder. So you could see it works great on the thighs, the calf muscle, and that can massage your tight legs and tight muscles and the ball of your foot. So see, I use it on the ball of the foot, but the tough part is you can't really hold it at the bottom. Uh, you basically, can't lay it on the ground and rotate your muscles, which is what most people need for the ball of the foot. This is a massage roller stick as well as a cryosphere. I love the massage roller stick because within like 10 to 20 to 30 seconds, you can massage your calf muscles, your hamstrings, your the bottom of your foot, the front of your foot. So look at, I'm massaging the arch right there. That gives the front of the foot more flexibility as well as the thigh. It takes a lot of pressure off the foot by massaging these. This makes you more flexible the rest of the day. You can take advantage of that. Take a look at this shoe versus this shoe. This shoe has no support. It has no cushion in the front. There's no stability in the back. The difference is there's something called the minimalist shoe index. For biomechanical injuries like ball of the foot pain, you want something that's close to 0% on the minimalist scale. Specifically, check out this shoe. This is a Hoka shoe. Look at how thick this thing is. There's no way I can bend it. So look at how thick the support is. Right here, that's called your stack height. That's everything underneath your heel. Look at how thick the midsole is. When you walk on this, you roll across it 
rather than jam. Look at how rounded this surface is. So as you're walking, it rolls onto the front, whereas with a shoe like this, it can jam. Look at, there's no roll here. Unless my, if my hand's straight, there's no roll. Whereas with this guy, look at the roll. Look at how easily that rolls. That rolling feature takes a lot off the front of your foot. Not only that, but there's a drop where this mid foam, the midsole right here, absorbs a majority of the middle of the foot. So I love the Hoka shoes. They work really well, and I'm a big fan of these. But a more important thing with shoes is you just want stability. So you can see this isn't as supportive. This has a great heel. And right here, same thing. It's got a roll. It's got a little bit of a heel lift. It's got some foam through the middle. You can kind of compare the two right here. This one is the same shoe size, but this one has a lot more foam built up than this one. So this is great, but this is more of a medium term option. You don't need to go crazy. Here's the real key though, is an orthotic like this. So take a look at this right here. When your foot stands, look at how much it flattens out. And you can see the pressure in the front of the foot. It really flattens out in there. But with an orthotic, take a look at this. I push down hard. It does not flatten out in the middle. You can see the arch and the heel prevents that back from flattening out. But watch this right here. Look at how much it flattens out. I'm not playing a trick on you here. If you buy your own expensive $200 foot model and orthotic, you will see that the same thing happens to you. This is proven scientifically to get a lot of pressure off the front of the foot with each step, allowing those muscles, joints, and ligaments and neuromas to heal very quickly. There is another trick. Grabbing a pad like this and putting it into this area right here, you can see in the front, you can see how much I'm indented, but putting this pad here lets the bones float over the edge. So you can put two pads, three pads, four pads on top of each other. So you can see where that pad is right there in the middle. That's taking pressure off this area right here. So that's a trick, metatarsal pads with orthotics. And you don't have to go expensive. This thing's like 20 bucks or less. These are great orthotics right here. So this works really well. This will take a lot of pressure off your feet and get you feeling a whole lot better pretty quickly. So get yourself an over the counter orthotic. Look at this right here. You just put some padding there and that works great. I personally like to put this padding underneath right here and you can stack two, three, maybe four if you're feeling crazy, you know, get that pressure off the front of the foot. If you get a shoe like this, and put an orthotic like this with a metatarsal pad, you can effectively have zero pressure on the front of your foot. And technically you're pain free, but you're gonna have to absorb it through your knees and your hips. Just keep that in mind. But as a month or two goes by and you work on your stretching and flexibility, you will be doing a whole lot better. This is a perfect example of why orthotics are so important. Try using this device to stretch your calf muscle without a shoe and orthotic. This is gonna kill the front of my foot. Even right now, it's starting to hurt quite a bit. So even using an ankle slant board, which is a fantastic stretching device, this kills my metatarsalgia reason. My Morton's neuroma, my capsulitis, my stress fracture, uh, the sore bruising and the ball of my foot, this is hurting. The more I turn this ankle up, the more pressure I'm having in the ball of my foot. This is a huge example where stretching can be both a help long term, but an enemy short term. But watch this. If I have a good stable shoe and I put a good orthotic in there with a metatarsal pad and now I stand on it, almost no pain in the ball of my foot, but I'm getting a great stretch in my calf and my hamstring and my hip. And if I keep doing this long enough, I'm not going to be damaging the ball of my foot but I'm going to gradually be getting more flexible through the hamstring, the calf muscle. So this is a huge contrast for how good stretching is with support. So see right now, I can use the ankle slant board and stretch both of my feet while wearing the good shoe, the good orthotic. I'm not causing more damage, whereas I'm gradually increasing the flexibility through my hamstring, through my calf muscle. I'm gradually feeling a lot better. 
And this is the real secret. You have to prevent new damage while gradually getting healthier and getting pressure off the front using these stretch. Surgical options. Surgical options show that some of the best surgical solutions are actually to target the Achilles tendon and lengthen it. If the Achilles tendon is less tight, the foot can now stretch up. And as you walk, there's less pressure on the ball of the foot. Whereas with it tight, there's more pressure on the ball of the foot. So gastrocnemia lengthening surgeries are a great option. Another option is you can see if some of these bones, like the second metatarsal, for example, is longer than the other ones, then shortening surgeries can shorten that bone. Those are relatively quicker healing, but this is with people with arthritis, with history of fractures. This is not for the average young healthy person watching these videos. There's also rear foot motion. So if your foot's bending out like this, you're putting more pressure on the front of your foot. Ankle braces can help with that. If the orthotic and the shoe still didn't do it, an ankle brace on top of that will get you close to 0% pressure off the front of your foot and still let you walk and go to work and do everything you need to do. Check our show notes for some of our favorite braces. So you guys can see I've got my uh, fashionable scrub top and my blue shorts. I hope no patients notice. So take a look here. I have metatarsalgia in my left foot. My hamstring's a lot tighter. I can already feel it as I'm stretching right here. Look at my left foot. It's got that amount of flexibility. My right foot has that much flexibility. You can see it right there. I've got a lot more flexibility, probably about 10 degrees between the two. So you can see this one has less flexibility than this one. As I push up, like sure I can cheat by trying to adjust with my muscle here, but I feel it through my left foot. So as a result, I have a whole lot more pain on the ball of my foot right here. So as a result, I'm gonna come back over here to get a little bit of a better view. The ball of my foot right here impacts more in the middle. Do you understand that concept, guys? So my hamstring right here and my calf muscle are both tight. As a result, when I walk and I stretch right here, I'm getting a lot more pressure here because I impact down here and it doesn't really stretch up quite as much. So here's what we know about stretching. And I'm gonna come down into the frame here is stretching 15 to 30 seconds at a time, three times in the morning, really does increase your flexibility here and here. Statistically, you gotta do a lot of stretching. There's not a lot of true evidence, but what I see in patients on average is people hardly keep up with their stretching by themselves. But it takes about 30 seconds times three, you get 90 seconds at that point to get some flexibility. Uh, if you can maintain those numbers seven days a week, you should be able to get five to 10 degrees of increased flexibility. So this is, uh, we're at 90 degrees, Ooh, 90 degrees right there. So see a perfect square and they're able to get 10 degrees more. So roughly that much more flexibility. That's a lot of stretching for very little results. Can you exercise with this metatarsalgia? The answer is you can't go running. You shouldn't do the elliptical. You shouldn't do stair climbers. You shouldn't walk on hard concrete. There are better forms of exercises. Specifically, there's a lot of studies, high intensity interval training, bike riding, push-ups, sit-ups, Pilates, uh, yoga, you could weight lift, you could do everything. If you're not repetitively putting thousands of steps on the front of your foot, then you can do the exercise. Look at NFL players or professional athletes. They can break their ankle and they still get in great shape. So what I recommend is swimming, bike riding. Stationary bikes are like $50 online for a fold out bike now. You can do free Pilates videos or free exercise videos um, from your own home these days. I love a great book. It was called You Are Your Own Gym and it's how to do any type of weightlifting exercise with stuff around the house. This stuff works, just keep it in mind. Don't use this as an excuse to get out of shape because the bottom line is if you look in the mirror, it's not an excuse. You can still stay in great shape. This is a great routine to start chilling and offloading the ball of your foot. 
So you want to freeze a frozen water bottle. A plastic bottle will do. I froze a can in this case, but be careful, it could explode. This is chilling my medial and lateral plantar nerve, the plantar fascia, and the ball of the foot. This will provide pain relief and loosen up and massage those muscles. You could use a cryosphere too, if you happen to have one. That's a frozen ice ball. And you can't really put that one down. You got to hold it. So that's what makes it challenging. So I gave it a thumbs down right there, but it works great on the calf. Same thing, you can break up the knots in the calf. These are very cheap. They usually come for free with most devices or like a dollar, wherever you can find them. That will massage the ball of your foot. So massaging works great. It can squeeze that extra inflammatory fluid out of there, loosen you up in the morning. Here's a bigger, harder one. I always say start soft, especially the older you are and the more sore you are, start softer. You can easily go harder as your pain comes down. That gives you more adhesion breakups. Then you can stretch. So after you massage an ice, there's no way I could have touched my feet first thing in the morning. I would have barely reached the toes, but see now I have about 20, 30 extra degrees. And now you can use a towel. That's when you really start stretching. That's when it really makes a difference. So now you use a towel and you start just stretching your calf muscle and your hamstrings. So you just count to 10 there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The true cure to this is tight muscles. Look, if your Achilles tendon and your hamstring are tight, the foot can't flex up and you're landing on the front of the foot. But if your Achilles is loose, look at you're now walking in the middle of your foot. So that's your hamstring, your lower back, your calf muscles, your hips, your knees, all this stuff can be tight. So if we see knee arthritis, hip arthritis, torn Achilles tendons that have developed scar tissue, torn hamstrings that have scar tissue, back impingements, slip discs, all this type of stuff might be making you lean more on one foot than the other. It's usually the left foot or the right foot. It's usually not both equally at that point. And that might be you. You might wanna to go to a podiatrist and get that evaluated. That's the real cure and that's the real solution is identifying why you're tight and why you're putting so much pressure. You can't just keep taking pills and ignoring the true cause of this pain. Do you guys see this right here? This is stretching me by myself. So that right there is holding my big toe and my thigh up. So you can see the angle here is bent a decent amount. So what that means is um, you're getting a decent amount of stretch and it's holding me. I feel it in my thigh and I feel it in my calf muscle. So wearing this, it's been shown if you wear it about 30 minutes, about five days a week, you get about 10 degrees of increased motion in the front of your foot, your calf, your thigh. That's better for running, that's better for your metatarsalgia, but that's how much stretching it takes to get your flexibility back. It took you decades for your flexibility to go away, so get it fixed with this. Nice, right here, this guy, is unfortunately about $400, believe it or not, because it's a test model. But see this, I put a little wedge in the big toe area to lift up the big toe, because as your big toe's lifted up, it prevents your foot from twisting out. Is weight loss an issue? This, the reality is yes. It's not the number one issue. It's like number 20 on the list, but the reality is for every pound you gain, it's three pounds on your foot. So there's a lot of physics studies that show this, but especially coming down the stairs, it's five times or more your body weight onto one foot. And the reasoning is you're only standing on one foot at a time. You're not when you're walking or when you're running, only one foot's hitting and it's coming down with momentum and speed and bent at an angle. So it's a small surface area. So every pound you decrease, that's like five pounds, three to five pounds less on your feet. Keep that in mind, even losing five pounds, that's a huge relief. So, but if you're 350 pounds at a certain point, you have to get healthier. 
All this stuff will help, but just wearing huge shoes and huge inserts the rest of your life and braces, that will now put the pressure on your knees, your hips, and those joints will start hurting. You have to get your muscle strength up, you have to get your flexibility up, and you have to get your weight down. This is now the stretching guide after you've already massaged and iced and got your inflammation down. So you want to stretch your right leg to your calf muscle, to your hamstring, and your left leg to your calf muscle, to your hamstring. You want your foot turned in. You can you start with a towel. You can use your hands. And what you want to do is check your plantar fascia. Is it tight? Uh, to stretch the plantar fascia, you want an ankle incline. So see right here, I'm standing on a towel, so it's taking pressure off the ball of my foot, so it's cushioned. If you don't have shoes or orthotics, you can do this at home very easily. And a big one is the hips, your groin muscles, the inside of your thigh. You want to stretch that, to foam roll it, then stretch it and get those glutes too. The real key to seeing your podiatrist and getting a great diagnosis is you have to get your body checked out. You have to get an x-ray of your foot. Is one bone short? Do you have a fracture? Do you have a stress fracture? Do you have arthritis? Sometimes we see arthritis through the second toe, the big toe joint. These are things called hallux rigidus, second toe arthritis. You could have hammer toes. These might be things that need injection, surgery, or manipulation, but we might also need an ultrasound to see if a ligament is torn. There's plantar plate tears, so you could have a tear of this toe. You could have the toes crossing over. Simply uh, doing stretches and exercises won't fix this stuff, so get to the root cause of it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We love our subscribers. We love the comments. Tell us what helped and tell us how you got your ball of the foot paint. We need it to keep growing.